Hello seniors, it's me Andrew, and I just want to make this video to share my thoughts on the drunk driving presentation on Wednesday. I believe when no Thursday, my bad. Um, what I have to say about it is that it's, it provides valid points for everyone in the future and it's to teach them to make good choices. It's very educating. I felt it's very educating and no harm was done, but it's to teach you um, what would happen in a real drunk driving accident. Plus the, plus the blood was just markers, basically. Just red and the cars. I don't know whose cars those were, and I don't know whose red car was that out near the high school. But it's a presentation, and it's to show you what will happen in a real accident. So, yeah. So, basically, I mean, we were outside. I mean, it was hot out there. I was sweating, and... But it did provide that a lot of valid points in that. And, of course, Griffin was the one giving the presentation, and so was everyone else. And, of course, the fire department was there. The police department were there. Officer Fred, Officer Almanzer was there, our resource officer. They all were providing valid points of what can happen in a real accident. So, yeah. I mean, this is what will happen. Like, after we graduate, you, you all of... You seniors, and including me, are going to want to make good choices. Because otherwise, you'll wind up in jail. If you ever get, if you ever drink, you'll, don't be drinking and driving. Drive sober or get pulled over. Or else, or else you're going to wind up in a car accident, get thrown in jail, and get booked. And you will lose your license. And you will be in jail. Besides, driving is a privilege, not a right. That's what can happen. Those are the consequences you could face if you get into a drunk driving accident. Those are the consequences. Or if you're like, I mean, that's what you got to do. I mean, that's why you shouldn't be drinking. Because this stuff's bad. I mean, I won't be drinking when I, even when I turn 21. I won't be doing that. Because those are the consequences you can face. I mean, there's this one guy named Sean Richards, I think. I don't know. Let me figure out what his name is. Um, it's um, Sean. There we go. Sean Story. Let me see what I can find. Um, Sean's drunk. No, not uh, Sean's story. Um, traumatic brain. Um, Sean's drunk driving story. There you go. That's a perfect one. Please don't hit me with a copyright strike. Or I don't know if it is, but who knows. If it is, then please don't hit me. Okay, Sean's drunk driver. All right, I'm going to research it right now. Um, so, let me explain to you about his story. At 22, this is about Sean Carter. The choice of a lifetime. Mm. Alright, facesofdrunkdriving.com I will explain to you about Sean's story So, let me explain to you Sean was a business major at Midwestern State University in Wichita Falls he loves sports and girls, a good combination for a guy who is an athlete and who already had modeling agents in Dallas and York City. Sean's mother, Jenny, had her hands full with Sean, to, Sean, his identical twin brother, Todd, and his older brother, Ben. The night before Easter Sunday in 2005 changed everything for all of them. At 22, Sean Carter was a college junior out drinking with friends. 
He knew he was in no condition to drive home, but neither was the buddy who gave him a ride. The driver walked away from the crash and left Sean in a wheelchair in Iowa City. Now a computer is his voice. Meet John Carter. All right, um, Sean's brain injury left him unharmed mentally, but physically no longer able to walk to her. He couldn't swallow his own saliva, causing him to drool. He couldn't dress or feed himself or go to the bathroom alone. At night, he found himself trapped on the covers in his bed, unable to move when he was too out of cold. Once fiercely independent, he was forced to rely on his mother for everything. Year after year, Sean and many others have worked tirelessly to heal his body and restore its connectivity. His recovery meant relentless physical, occupational speech and therapy, and rare biofeedback therapy. Sean did discover a new calling. Since the crash, Sean and Jenny have embraced the new mission like tell everyone they they can about choices, consequences, and the preventable dangers of drinking and driving. <sighs> he has made a remarkable progress. Sean and Jenny have his progress in other than seven years of the crash that stole his brain. Sean has relearned how to walk with the aid of a cane in his left hand and another person right hand. Sean will tell you the happiness to us. Basically, his email signature, this is what he said. I will talk, I will walk again. Sean Carter has relearned how to walk again. Basically, so yeah, that's his story. And his story will prove valid points of what can happen in the drunk driving accident. So yeah, I thought I'd make this video for you. So that story is, will provide a valid point too, not just my thoughts. Sean's story will provide valid points for you guys, not just my thoughts. So yeah, well I hope this video educated all of you and had and my thoughts were good. Thank you for watching. Bye.